friends or compatriot, this is the voice of unity in diversity. Divided we fall, together we are better. It goes beyond the color of our skin. It's more about our dreams and how we make it happen. Arise, O compatriots, the future is digital. Tomorrow beckons. ICT Entrepreneurship for Social Impact in Nigeria In 1962, the first international telephone link to Togo was commissioned in Nigeria by Sir Abubakar Tafarabalewa. Since then, the Nigeria's ICT industry has witnessed development at different levels. Through thick and thin, the Nigeria Telephony Com ICT witnessed a slow pace of development, leading to the achievement of about 400 connected lines to a population of about 120 million as at 2001, thus making telephony an elitist service. ICT is a tool, it's a modern tool that enhances productivity. So it is something that you can possibly not do without in this modern age. It is so important now that um, every organization, every government it has to prioritize it in their schedules of activities. It has to become a priority of government to develop that sector because developing the sector means developing all other sectors of the economy. Today, the story is different. The status symbol previously attached to telephony's history and the number of telephone users now hover around 180 million. Tele density has also jumped from 2% in 2001 to over 100%. The number of smartphones in Nigeria has also jumped to over 48 million. With these achievements, Nigeria became an active player in the knowledge economy. From e-commerce to agriculture, e-governance, tech innovation and enterprise, tourism, culture and entertainment all now are well stimulated. Foreign direct investment has also grown. Contribution to the GDP is also growing with potentials of taking over major sectors such as oil, agriculture, manufacturing and others. Today, the telephone means a whole world to the average Nigerians, enabling them to carry out financial transactions, engage in online activities ranging from hotel reservations, airline bookings, payments for goods and services from the comfort of their homes or offices. Mr. Nasiru Tijani of Co-Creation Hub in Lagos is one of many Nigerian youths who have taken advantage of the growth of ICT to become an entrepreneur. Working in CCL, it's been very, very helpful considering the fact that I'm surrounded by light minds and geeks to say. Though we're not geeks, we also have our other life bit. It's been helpful, it's been productive working from here. I've achieved a lot because I have clients from not just Nigeria, I brand companies from outside Nigeria as well. It is big companies. Right now I'm working on something for Union Bank. I've done designs for Forbes. I've done, I've done a whole lot of designs. And I've done a lot. Nasiru is not alone in this benefit of ICT impact in Nigeria. Osine Iyanosime developed the Crocodile browser that's today competing with Google and Oscar Eponimo, creator of Choberi. Both started with little or nothing and today engaging people and running their own businesses. Well, Crocodile Browser is an Android web browser that we designed to make up for the inefficiencies of Google Chrome on a low-end device. Well, on a low-end device, Google Chrome tends to take up a lot of memory, so it bogs down the whole phone, slows it down, and crashes most of the applications on the phone while it's running. So Crocodile Browser takes up a very little amount of space on the memory, so it's fast and doesn't bog down the phone. Well, there's the start page of Crocodile Browser. We have a few bookmarks on the start page. You can either click on one of them or type a URL here. Like I'll type Google. If you want to add a new tab, 
you tap on this tab this square icon with a one with number one inside and you click the plus button to add a tab if you want to if you want to delete a tab or close the tab you can just click the x button or slide it if you want to add a bookmark you can click on the, either the physical menu button here and go to add bookmark or if your device doesn't have physical menu button there will be a menu button that will appear here and you click on it and you add your bookmark okay try and search the name of the president of nigeria muhammad Buhari, on crocodile browser let's see The solution we provide, on one hand, helps the retailers efficiently manage and track those categories of products that are approaching the end of shelf life, and simultaneously, we are able to map um, economically disadvantaged people or people who are interested in uh, low-cost food products to those categories of products. How this started was in 2013. Um, I developed a very skeletal version of it. It was more like an idea and concept and it got some level of recognition from the International Telecoms Union. So I received an award for innovation from the UN Agency for ICT, that's the International Telecoms Union. And we got some kind of support and mentorship, including uh, a small grant. So with that grant, we were able to further develop the product into what it is right now. We've done our valuation, and I would say our valuation is in the region of $750,000 at this point. The number of internet users has grown from about 1.5 million a decade ago to over 97.21 million, thereby making Nigeria top in internet usage in Africa. Presently, Nigeria has about 15.5 million smartphone users with a 108.11 tele-density. This has contributed to the success of businesses and technology innovation platforms in the country such as CC Hub, Idea Hub, Tinapa Software Cluster, Ikeja Computer Village, Abuja Social Good Hub and much more. The Nigerian government, through the Ministry of Communication Technology, has developed a robust broadband plan to fast-track access to the internet and broadband diffusion to all parts of the country. This will enhance socio-economic growth under the Smart Initiative, aimed at driving a smart digital Nigeria through capacity, job and wealth creation. To many, this is the next revolution driven by data beyond voice. ICT must come to the rescue of Nigeria in the area of revenue generation, in the area of employment generation, in the area of wealth generation. I've, seen, I've been to a few countries, particularly my last trip to China, was really an eye-opener in the extensive potentials that ICT development has for the development of this country. Even countries like Ghana, like uh, Rwanda, have made a lot of progress using ICT. So for me, ICT must be seen as the cash cow, you know, of tomorrow, today's Nigeria and tomorrow's Nigeria. If the Nigerian government is looking for an alternative sector to oil and gas, then I see the telecommunications sector playing that important role of supplementing the oil and gas sector. And the reason why I'm saying this is we have many things going for us. We have the population. We have the enterprise. We have above all the motivation, you know, that is needed to drive the sector. And I'm saying this with, with all honesty. Look at the level of content, local content development, you know, that is happening. The budget IT, the jobs in Nigeria, the truck C, all these are, you know, applications developed, you know, locally. And many, many more are coming. Only recently, we rewarded, you know, young Nigerians who came up with contents that are local. Contents that will be driving the economy in agriculture, 
in medicine and so on and so forth. We want to make the services of NIPOS uh, ICT based. To do that, it means the services of NIPOS, the post offices, have to be uh, connected to the global village by providing ICT infrastructure. The idea of it is to form a backbone for the financial inclusion where the unbanked populace of Nigeria can find a balance where by they can access fund and remit fund. As part of the ministry's um, agency and working in line according to the national broadband okay. plan, we've been working with, um, we have plans with um, NIPOST because through NIPOST we're able to achieve digital and financial inclusion. NIPOST has the largest um, athletes of offices nationwide and um, we've signed, we've, we've demonstrated that earlier last year and um, once we're also now trying to you know um, set up more bring up more post offices um, provide them with broadband so what the national council is actually basically to provide support night post with broadband because without broadband you can't have all those digital and financial inclusion programs of the government done you need to carry it over a super highway wherever you don't fight fiber satellite is there in the rural and remote areas national side is well positioned to just drop broadband to the post offices and um, beyond even the the places where you have the fiber there are some places where um, you know, we, we call them even urban unserved areas. Natural Comsa is also available. Um, over the years, I think um, the main um, uh, reason for setting up Galaxy has been achieved to a large extent. Um, when I say so, first, primarily, it was to ensure that we have a common platform that all of government MDAs work off. off. And uh, right now, we have what we have called the OneGov.net platform, which is more or less like you know, the government platform that supports um, communication across government, whether it's a voice communication or, uh, or emails, IP, all kinds of, 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 of communication goes across that platform. And these are linked to government data centers that become the warehouses of uh, where government data is stored. And so primarily when you look at that, the access to that is available to all MDAs, wherever they are across the country. First, the number of uh highly skilled IT personnel we have in the country now. In the area of scholarship, we've awarded over 300 scholarships to students aspiring to uh, do master's program in core areas of ICT. We've done now about 42 for PhD. And most of them are working in different organizations, both in private and private sector in Nigeria. Also, we have set up a full-fledged office for innovation and entrepreneurship development. What do we want to achieve by setting up that office? To look at the talents available in the country, work with them, take them through mentoring, develop entrepreneurship skills in them, to be able to translate the ideas they have into solutions, and to be able to take these solutions to marketable solutions that will meet specific needs of Nigerians and the international community. All we'll be doing will be campaigning on how to encourage the patronage of made in general city products and services. And most of these products and services, especially in general software, are being done by young innovators. And we are even now taking some of them to international platforms such as JITEX, CES, uh, CBIT, to see how things are done at that global platform. ICT has given our world a facelift. 
Innovation has brought us change, changing the way business is done and the way economic and social development occurs in most countries, including Nigeria. For us as entrepreneurs in this space, ICT enables you, be it software or hardware or firmware or physical infrastructure or expertise development or whatever you want to do, it enables you to apply those competencies, those skills of yours in relevant fields of our national economy. We currently run a staff strength of about 200 people and um, we encourage especially students. They come around, internship, get experience and a good number of them go on to get other jobs after school or even set up things by themselves, just trying to pattern after system specs, and that's encouraging. Okay. And apart from that, we have our own staff. Having stayed for some time, they've moved on a good number to outside the country. And I'm proud to say that just about all the major players in the international scene, you're likely to find one ex-system specs uh, staff. Uh, in the largest corporations in the IT industry and that's encouraging uh, so back to us in Nigeria the software we have also been able to provide creates efficiencies in organizations we focused mainly in uh, business solutions for organizations by creating this cascading efficiencies in organizations that also helps to provide what you may call quality jobs. Quality jobs um, for the economy, and um, that's something we're happy with. With what's happening today, the Internet of Things, makes it impossible, and I say that without any fear, that you dare not fight the countries that manufacture your artillery. Because with the Internet of Things that we're talking about, it means that they don't need to come, they can disable your airplanes, they can disable your missiles remotely because these are things that we already see, already hear. So talking about how great a nation is in terms of military, you realize that this is all driven by innovation using IT. So the second bit of how nations become great is how financially sound they are. So the agrarian revolution, the industrial revolution, these are gone today because you now realize that even today, IT has been able to influence agriculture so much that even the cocoa that you used to say was seven years, people are now able to do in one and a half years using IT. When people come in, they see opportunities across the sector that they are interested in, they create solutions, they, 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 they make that sector a lot more efficient and effective, they employ people because now they begin to make revenue out of it, they try to see how to scale, technology becomes a, a, a major role in that scale. A major beneficiary of this ICT-powered innovation is the SMEs. Just as you'll find in other climes, small and medium enterprise play critical roles in growing economies. And in Nigeria, they are in tandem with technological innovation. SME in Nigeria is very huge and its contribution to the country's GDP is significant. For the records, 48% of the country's GDP is generated from SME. There are about 17 million registered SME operating in Nigeria, providing employment for over 32 million Nigerians, protecting 84% of the labor force in the country. With ICT, the SMEs are innovating to grow their business and increase profitability. In order to achieve a sustained growth, many of the SMEs are adopting technology and innovations in no small ways which is in line with this year's World Telecoms and Information Society Day celebration, which focuses on the need for governments, the private sector and other stakeholders to promote and support ICT entrepreneurship for social impact. We have a staff strength of, uh, when you combine the, uh, the strength of Jumia, the on-site itself, and also the logistics arm of, uh, of EIG that supports Jumia, it's about 1,500. Okay. So creating that employment is, is one. Okay. You create people who, who didn't have those skills, they've learned those skills and they are employable now in, in e-commerce. Secondly, you have our vendors. As you know, Jumia operates a marketplace model, which means that 
we have vendors whose inventory is actually what we have live on the Junior platform. Okay. So we have about 6,000 vendors who have their products on the Junior platform. So some of them don't even own a warehouse. We have some vendors who the only office they have is their mobile phone. And that's, that's how, and these are some of our top sellers actually. So that, that gives you the, the extent to which um, a company like Jumia, when it operates in a market like this, can create employment. It is practically impossible for the human man, the human mind, to do nothing, to think about nothing. And that thinking process has become the foundation for development of any other revolution. We've been working on an innovation hub for the past uh, year. And um, I can show you uh, what we've been able to do. So this is the hub. This is the first of its kind in Nigeria, I must say. I've given to a lot of hub, but this is the first of its kind. OK? And it's donated by Zanibar. But it's done as a partnership between my company and the uh, Delta State government. We have built a very strong uh, a cash flow of revenues that is not going to fluctuate. Therefore, we are very solid to list. That's why it's taken us 10 years. Why do I say that 10 years ago? We're ready to list in 2007. And of course, you know what happened to the global economy, uh, starting with the subprime in America, and the market tanked in 2008, July. And it remained uh, at the bottom right through 2009. So the fact that we could attract capital of $10 million when nobody was buying was very clear to us. Now, this capital we attracted was not just the money, but also the best practices that this company, Orios, was able to add to what we already had. So governance structure, risk, pro, risk uh, register, um, remuneration structure for directors, a proper structure of the board. Innovating for change and growth, no matter how disruptive, is what the local manufacturers are adopting. It is a way of life that most have embraced in order to compete and survive the business climate no matter how harsh. These original manufacturers are also creating platforms for youth empowerment and job creation in the country. This is to prepare the nation and its people for the digital revolution where skills and knowledge is the currency. believe that uh, with the passion that we have to ensure success in this job and with the commitment of the federal government to bring about real change, not only the change of leadership but also the change in the way we do things, I believe we will reach the target of ensuring you know, a deepening of access by all Nigerians in all parts of the country. To look into a future with brightness, we must wake up. To make our dreams a reality, we must brace up. To show the world our reality, we must take up. To work together, we must get up. To rule the digital ecosystem, ICT and innovation must be adopted in its full form. Join Nigeria through the Ministry of Communication to grow the digital and knowledge economy for the prosperity of all Nigerians. <laughs>